Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Day Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.06 p.m. on uh, March 7, 2019. This is a strategic advanced webinar presented for members and um, all other um, listeners on the Google YouTube channel. All video, all free vi uh, video webinars, what we call video casts, are uploaded to the Google YouTube channel for free viewing by anyone out there with the internet connection. Very valuable resource, very uh, actionable information on market forecasts and individual stocks. Highly encourage everyone to go ahead and visit, um, listen, and join us uh, at the Clueless 8 Trading Club. In order to join us, all you have to do is go to the Clueless 8 website. That's clueless8.com. On the top, it says subscribe. Hit that. Join as a free trial member, seven-day free trial, or join as a gold or platinum member. And you'll see the magic of tactical trading, or what we call trading without emotions. No emotions. We try to uh, minimize the effects of individual human emotions while we're trading these extremely volatile robotic markets. And overall, we have a phenomenal track record in navigating all types of market, bull markets, bear markets, and sideways markets. On that note, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. And let us begin. We also have a very powerful Instagram channel, Clueless A Trading. If you do not have an Instagram account, which I didn't have before, uh, besides, for my pe besides for my pets, uh, is just create one and follow us. The highlights of every day, uh, every, uh, uh, highlights of uh, trades. On, a, on any given day uh, posted there, and it's a great resource for you to see a slice of what we do. It's uh, purely for promotional and marketing purposes, and I highly encourage everyone, all members and free trial subscribers to pass the word around and um, follow us on the Instagram channel. Love to get a huge following out there and uh, get our little crowd here at the Clueless 8 Trading Club moving higher. Okay, on that note, uh, let me begin. Tonight, we are going to look at some very advanced screens. They're certainly quite advanced when it comes to trading. They're very effective and they're very profitable in the way we uh, do things using the Quad, Q-U-O-D-D -D platform, charting platform that utilizes bar charts as their charting mechanism. Anyone who's interested in subscribing to Quad, I've been subscribing to them for uh, since 2000, I think 2000 and nine or ten uh back from my wall street days um feel free to uh, contact me and i'll provide the information you can call them up do a free trial with them and then join them uh and and subscribe highly effective for anyone who's serious about trading so we're going to look at something different here as you can see the screens behind you um uh, you're looking at one of the screens here which is the vix screen um, and we're going to be looking through a series of we're going to be looking at the vix we're going to look in the spx the spy we're going to be looking at some individual stocks and how I tend to utilize this particular um, utilize this particular platform to minimize my losses and maximize my profits in highly volatile markets. As I always like to say, this ain't grandpa's market. This is not what the market was a couple of years ago. This is certainly what the was what, what the market was back in the two thousands. Okay. This is a highly robotic, algorithmic, high-frequency driven, black box driven market, which is correlated with exact levels. Uh, and in order to identify them and know where the potholes are, where you need to cover your shorts, where you need to go long, are, are very visible in um, very visible using the quad platform. Um, I use Thinkorswim. Uh, I use uh, TC2000 Warden. And of course, I use investing.com, which is also a very highly effective platform. This one is more advanced because we tend to get some signals a slightly, so maybe a couple of seconds faster, or maybe, you know, not a minute, because that's a long time in trading, uh, faster than what you get on other platforms. Don't ask me why, but that's why I call it the Algo HFT or Algorithmic High Frequency Trading um, Charts. I, I uh, show them on real time as much as I can. And people who do use Quad and a few members who do uh, can certainly relate to what I'm saying. Okay, so we have uh, two members here and hopefully some others will stream in or they can listen to it later. Uh, Mike, are you fully connected? Mike, 
Mike, can you hear us? Okay. Trina, are you connected? Can you see the visual and uh, have you have uh, the audio? Yes, I can. Okay, great. I just want to make sure because sometimes the technical issues and you know I see people uh, as uh, the in 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 there but uh, sometimes they are not connected. Okay, so um, and you can see the screens clearly. Yes. Okay, perfect. So let me start off by saying um, uh, and make it uh, uh, a, a quick gist of what uh, is is going on. Uh, primarily, the pullback today uh, was due to the collapse in the euro, the currency. OK, the uh, the European currency, the euro, which is uh, widely uh, which is used in the European in, in the eurozone. Um, and uh, and when the euro collapsed uh, earlier on uh, during Mario Draghi's uh, ECB, that's European Central Bank, that's their Federal Reserve Bank. Um, and he basically said that he has is no he's no longer going to raise rates at the moment. And uh, and he's going to also implement some mechanisms to lend uh, money to the bank similar to a lighter version of qe or quantitative easing like we did and they've also uh, also have their own version of qe uh it interest rates collapsed in, in the euro in the eurozone and that caused the currency to fall a little bit more than one percent now that might not seem a lot to people who are not really uh, quite understand the dynamics of macroeconomics but that's a big thing that's a big thing so when the euro collapsed Conversely, the U.S. dollar shot up, and that caused a risk-off type of sentiment. In simple English, that means that stocks were for sale. Overall, I'm talking about, not that we had some killer winners uh, during the day, but I'm just saying, uh, overall, there was a, what we call a risk-off environment. In a risk-off environment, uh, you tend to have, um, you tend to have uh, uh, stocks on sale. And hedge funds and other macro global players, fast players who are day trading as well as Globex overnight trading, they have to unload their positions. That's where the pressure came from. Initially, the markets went up, futures went up when he was talking, and he was talking about the LTRO mechanism. Uh, please Google it and check it out uh, with the bank lending mechanism. Sh futures actually went up a bit. And then right after when he talk started talking about the slowdown in the eurozone um, and things like that, and he's not looking to raise rates and um and and uh, and basically uh implement these lending mechanisms there was a, there's a bit of fear that if europe is slowing down that hard how much is it going to affect the global economy um europe does affect the global economy they're a very large part of the global economy but uh, the fact is that uh, that caused the pressure to come through uh selling you know this the the sell uh the selling started and when we look at the spx chart in a minute uh you'll see uh, and then there was a bounce, and then we fell again, and then there was a bounce. But still, we ended the day down 200 points instead of down 400 points, you know? So that's uh, uh, that's really, uh, uh, really uh, what happened. So uh, keep in mind, for newer traders who are not really uh, well-versed in understanding why things go, they're like, hey, what's wrong with this stock? Why is it down? It's really not that simple. It's not that there was any stock-specific issue, per se. Um, this was a macro global issue, which was caused by the drop in the euro euro currency, which caused the U.S. dollar to go up. And when the U.S. dollar shoots up like that, puts pressure on Asian currencies because they are inversely correlated to the U.S. dollar. And uh, the U.S. dollar getting stronger means that our ex you know on a short term basis, the our export oriented companies, which is basically 60 percent or more of the S and P 500 companies. Their exports are going to be valued higher. That means the comp uh, other countries will have a difficult time uh, affording U.S. goods because they, because they pay in U.S. dollars. Their 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 loans are in U.S. dollars. So obviously, their cost of borrowing and their expenses just went up. So that is the simplest way I can explain it. So U.S. dollar shot up. Primarily, the euro fell. U.S. dollar shot up and caused this global risk off situation, which basically means that the market net net was down. And that is flowing over a little bit to the overseas market right now in Asia. So let's see what what is going on here. So let me uh, uh, start off with the S and P. I think that's uh, and I'm going to bring it over into the screen. I am looking at about eight screens here, so I have to juggle them around. Perfect. So it's in the screen now. And what I like about the quad system is that the candles are very clear. The structure that I draw over it are very clear. 
and then I look at the uh, at at, at uh, uh, the uh, one of the more simpler but very powerful because that's you know uh, once you train yourself to do this, it's 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 actually very very powerful, very simple to read. Which are the slow stochastics, the S stock, and the F stock. It didn't say F, but this is the fast stochastics, the nine o three, uh, the nine three three, and this is the fourteen three three. So, um, and these are default parameters. I don't change them around. I'm not that smart. So, um, so when they get oversold, markets tend to find the floor. When they get overbought, and by now you all know that uh, I've covered this extensively in so many webinars and extensively on my real time post. When they get overbought. Market means that the market's going to pull back a bit, and that's the general rule of the thumb. And uh, and when they get overbought here, uh, oversold here, as you can see, then the markets are starting to bottom, and we're going to have a short-term rally. In my opinion, that short-term rally most likely is going to come by the by. Uh, it can come as early as tomorrow, if not Monday or Tuesday. All right. In the meantime, the markets never go down in a straight line. Markets fall. This is the opening today, the big uh, red candle. And then the then the three marching soldiers or three candles here, as you can see, it was moving up nicely. Uh, and then at uh, at uh, 1 p.m. came the force margin sellouts. Remember, whenever the markets go down, hedge funds and these fast uh, day trading large macro funds, which are using leverage, which means they're using margin to a very high degree, sometimes 10 to 1, sometimes 5 to 1. That means for every dollar, they're borrowing another $5 when they are in losing positions they obviously have they're forced to sell out they know that force margin sellouts so moving up nicely then the force margin sellouts came then at three o'clock two o'clock and then at uh, starting around 3 p.m there was this uh, uh, green candle now in very simple terms each of these candles when they're moving up or down you can make yourself some pretty decent money now i'm not necessarily a 15 minute trader even though i do trade trade and for volatile days i do a lot of trades on the side which are very fast, very quick, and I share a good bunch of them. And if you're a fast trader and you have time to do it uh, and the expertise to do it, it doesn't really need that much expertise. It needs speed uh, and some capital. And you don't need to trade with big money when you're trading these uh, candles. Uh, you can make uh, a decent sum. Like even on a day like today where those overall positions were down, some of the positions that were running like monsters, which you look at, look at in the latter part of this presentation of this video cast, made up those profits and I was net net uh, profitable uh, nicely by the end of the day. One of the biggest winners today, as you all know, and I'm sure some of you participated, was Electronic Arts that I was talking about for the last 48 hours, right? Electronic Arts was up more than 300% plus, uh, 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 slightly more on one of the calls. And, all, and on average, they were up anywhere from 80 to 300%. So that takes away a lot of the pain, and there was just one example of it, uh, of them, of uh, one of the faster moving. We also had Yext, Y E X T, which was an earnings play. Uh, calls run from about a buck twenty to about two dollars and seventy cents, or a buck forty to two dollars and seventy. Very sweet returns. So net net, I actually ended up profitable for the day. So that's what I'm trying to explain. That as a trader. It, uh, regardless of what happens in the market, and I know we all you know, get caught when you get this sudden swoosh down, what we call mini flash crashes for reasons beyond our control. You know, Mario Draghi talking about the, the LTRO and the euro currency crashing. That's nothing that is in your control. So as a trader, from a mental calibration standpoint, you have to accept the fact that there will be things that are completely out of your control. So you have to basically do some other quick, small trades with a little cash and make up whatever you're down on. It's not always possible, but, or you can set up some trades for the following week. Coming up next week is monthly options expiration. And, um, and, and you can, you can, uh, you know, you can, in many cases, come out green. I've done that many, many times. And uh, trust me, um, anyone can do it, but you have to be quick and you have to know how to read charts and you have to know what levels to buy and sell, even though I show them very, very clearly on every single one of my trades, as you all know, okay? So, it is an ongoing learning process and volatility, you know, it's something that is unmanageable, but if you use the chart, it, be, it tends to be quite manageable. Let me just put it this way, because without my charts, I'd be just flailing like, uh, like a, 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 a bird with its wings clipped off. It doesn't sound too good, does it? But uh, honestly, that's, that's, you know, or a beached whale, 
you know, sitting there not knowing what to do, which happens to most um, individual traders. So I tend to be proactive. I am determined for these algos not to beat me, even though they do beat me sometimes on a certain day or so. But um, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And that's simply, you know, it is a battle. It's a, it's a numerical battle of trading the numbers and the charts. And you'll see there are, the results are pretty phenomenal. And if you want to get really in depth into it, like I've always said, I do spend my time and energy providing the advanced coaching sessions for a very minimal amount of money to cover the cost of running it uh, and such. And uh, you don't become a millionaire by uh, doing advanced coaching sessions, you know, for, for 50 bucks or 55 bucks a session. All right. Um, but uh, I do that to help my members, as you all know. So anyone who's still sitting on the sidelines saying, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'm not. Highly suggest you sign up for the group sessions. The private sessions are a little bit costlier because, it, you know, it's one to one. But whichever the way, the group sessions are highly effective. Sign up for it and you see the difference. Uh, seriously, I highly encourage you guys to do that. So on that note, uh, let us begin. So oh, going forward, we have Friday. Fr Friday is always, you know, choppy. Every day is choppy, but Fridays are. It's, it's a weekly, month, uh, weekly options expiration. There's a lot of pin the strike. They're going to be hitting the stock. They're moving stocks. It will be moving. Each individual stock will be moving in either direction. Uh, for no rhyme or reason other than a lot of machines trying to basically um, pin the strike and pay the option holders the least amount of money possible. Remember that. The market makers and now the electronic market makers who are, tra who are basically selling the options to you, they're not in the business of making you happy. They're in the business of making you sad, i.e. give you least amount of money or possible or take all your money. Uh, so that's called pinning the strike, especially if they're expiring tomorrow. So the setups are really for next week, which is monthly options expiration. As I've said, and I've been right almost 80 to 90% of the time, uh, you tend to get a nice sharp move into Friday or prior to Friday by Thursday um, on monthly options expiration, which is the third Friday of each month. And that's next week. And um, so you can make some decent uh, uh, change as long as you're set up on buying the tactical lows that are presenting themselves at this point. Okay, on that note, uh, let me start off with the S&P 500. First of all, SPX hourly. This is the chart that I use most extensively and I share with all of you. So what we're seeing here, you see the breakdown. I am following uh, and monitoring very closely on your behalf and for myself, the stochastics. The slow stochastics are very oversold. Excuse me. And now they're basically scraping the bottom. You can see that. Let me get a pen. There we go. Change the color of the pen. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Okay. Um, there you go. So we're starting to create a rounded bottom here. And every single time that we have rounded the bottom, and that's why I have these markers here, we have had a tradable low. A tradable low means that you will either get an intraday or a, they, you know, these moves last maybe one or two days, right? That's just the nature of the business. We can't do anything. We would like everything to be like multi-day, just every day up. It's happened, but in generally, it's a, it's a very quick move up, then a quick pullback. And if the trend is changing, then a multi-day rally. So accept the reality instead of wishing what might happen. You know, wishing won't do it. You have to work within what the cards are dealt in front of you, and that is in life and in trading. So every time the stochastics get oversold to this degree, you tend to get a tradable bottom. That's why I put the markers here. It gets overbought, you get a tradable top. That means you can make it, uh, you, you can, uh, if you're fast enough, you can uh, do some quick short trades. Um, overbought, market gets overbought. Then it kind of pulled back a little bit, maybe 60, 100 points, less than that. Uh, measuring measure these candles, and then you get a uh, uh, then you get a pullback, which is like a, a good for about maybe 100 to 150 points. Look what the stoves are doing; they're getting oversold. Then they get overbought. When we had this very sharp rally, very sharp rally uh, that was good for about 300 plus points, uh, you you notice that the stoves at that point just surge higher, get overbought. oversold, oversold, 
and again, this is not rocket science. Like I said in my last webinar, we're not launching SpaceX rockets. We are uh, simply um, tracking the market in a very mechanical way and making money uh, doing that. So then the markets get oversold, the hammer reversal right there, correlates with that. Then it kind of chops its way higher. So the markets chop their way higher, get overbought, flash crash, pulls back. It should have actually pulled back down here, but it didn't. That means that the market had strength. Then it pulls up, pulls up. And then this leg of the move here is basically this move here. Now I'm noticing that this is a rounded bottom and we seem to be getting a double bottom, which is generally considered to be constructive. See the double bottom? There. Now we could get a triple bottom. We could slide down and stay below the 20 mark uh, on the stochastics, which is similar to the relative strength index, RSI. And, um, and in that case, the market will slide a little bit lower. But if it starts to move higher, then you're going to get this big move up. Now, I'm not going to get into the exact detail of everything, but I do put the markers. There's your pivot. Below pivot is not good. Above pivot is good. You know, that simple rule of the thumb. Want to know the exact definition? Go to Investopedia. If you want to know the mechanics of how to really interact the internals with the externals and how to trade every single move on an hourly or two hour basis, then definitively sign up for the ACS sessions. I'm just giving you a basic idea of how to read these charts. Anyway, uh, I have, uh, there's a big gap here. You can see that there's your gap. That's why I have that in the shaded area. The shaded area is always gap. There's a small gap here, the shaded area right there. We went below the gap. We came up exactly to the gap and then we fell. You see the accuracy of these charts. The more you track them, the more you use them, the more you trade them. You'll notice how it's not exactly easy, easy because the movements are so fast, but you can certainly see the difference in your PL or and when to exit a position if you're if you're doing a day trade or so, on when to set a position if you are doing swing trades. So at this point, like I said, clearly there's a possibility we fill this gap. So that means the market could drop another 100 to 150 points. Okay, that possibility is there for tomorrow or early Monday. Um, in the meantime, the markets could get up there, hit this resistance level again, move towards the pivot. The pivot always acts like a major resistance once you break it. Don't get too excited because at that point we'll be exiting our fast spy positions or so. and um, and then. The market could basically fall again. That's how the mechanics of robotic trading works. All right. So we basically show you these charts. We construct them very. I construct them uh, in real time for all of you, uh, so that you guys can benefit and profit from it. So this gap is still pending. Don't know if it's going to get filled, um, but uh, chances are, if it does, then that's a pretty serious buying opportunity. We have a short-term low here, going back to the eighth of February. Uh, a major low, and that's approximately around 2681. Now, that's a lot lower. All right, so we'll first deal with what what's at hand right now, which is basically this gap. So keep focusing on that, and, uh, and the candles and stuff will tell us what the story is. If we get very fat green candles developing, then there's a fair shot that we will be up uh, a good solid 150 points or so on the Dow Jones um, on this move. If it breaks above the pivot, we have an upper Bollinger here at 2,800, and that would be a sweet return on the money, and things are going to be very fast and furious. What could do that? Some sort of positive news announcement coming out of the U.S.-China trade deal. You know, you could have a short squeeze that uh, good for three, 400 points, and they tend to happen very quickly within a matter of hours. You guys have been there. You know it. So, So that's it. The stochast this is the fast stochastics that's oversold too. And then you have the slow stochastics, which are slower, so a little bit more reliable. And um, and the fast stochastics obviously move a lot quicker. Now, some of you who even after a long time are still not understanding the mechanics of technical trading. 
contact me. I'll try to help you as much as possible. Sign up for the ACS sessions. And if you still are kind of like throwing darts at the wall and, and just, uh, you know, just wishing and hoping, you're obviously uh, not doing well. So just trying to help you guys out. So that's it. So there's your S&P 500. Very defined support levels. The numbers are even put in place. You can't get any better than this. All right. That's it. Next. Uh, so next one we're going to look at, that's your SPX. The SPY hourly, I use that quite a bit too. Hourly, you can see that. This was your. This was the run up at 3 p.m. This is where we are right. Uh, well, this is not showing real time. Maybe it is. Uh, futures are down right now about four. That's standard procedure. That's the pressure coming out of uh, Asia. Asian markets open, Australian markets open, and futures are right now down six and a half. So we are basically testing these levels down here as we speak. All right. Now, the, the thing that we correlate this with as an inverse proxy, opposite of what the markets are doing, is the VIX, right? So here's your VIX. Now, the VIX is a derivative product. That means it moves very algorithmic, algorithmically. I can't even say that word. It's, it's an algorithm on speed, okay? Up, down, fast. When you get slam downs, like we call it, these big red candles, that's good. That means the markets are going higher on the other side. When they're shooting up like that, like it did uh, uh, when the market opened, and these are uh, each candle is in a one-hour candle, that means the markets are moving down. VIX green, markets down. VIX red, markets up. Simple. Now, if you look at this chart here, you'll see all the levels that I've put out there, uh, which matches the supply levels where the sell where the sell programs come in, where the buy programs come in. I try to put markers and everything. The stochastics are basically uh, still uh, the, uh, are what we call a crossover down. They're moving down. Um, so that's telling us that oh, the VIX got overbought, just like on the other side, the S&P gets overbought. And the VIX should come down and retest and get oversold. If it gets oversold, then the VIX will basically come down again to this 15 level. At this point, this is a major uptrend line on a short-term basis since the 4th. And uh, if if we that should hold as support, that means the VIX can bounce from here. So you get a 100, 150 point rally on the front end on the market. The VIX comes all the way down here. Market gets overbought on the other side, starts to pull back. The VIX starts to pull up. That's exactly what's been happening. Now, this is the one hour chart of the VIX. This is for active traders. You're looking at things. For swing traders, remember the VIX doesn't, the, the charts don't look like individual stock charts. Even though I can see a pattern, the pattern is a lot faster, a lot straight up and down. It's a very geometric algorithmic pattern. Okay, just keep that in mind. Now, if you look at the daily VIX, the daily VIX is a little bit more ominous, a little bit more sending you a signal. Now, this is the fast stochastics telling you it's starting to get overbought. So the VIX might stop here at the 18 level. But so that means the market might, you know, uh, might find a tradable floor. But if you look at the slow stochastics, it's telling you that the VIX is far from getting overbought. So that means the market could fall more. That's why I'm saying the markets could fall. As I showed you on the S&P 500, the SPX chart. Well, this is a basic SPX chart without my structures on it. So here is my structures on it. This is, I haven't calibrated this one yet. So we could fall as, you know, we could fall to the lower Bollinger around the 2700 level. If we fall to the 2700 level, that's another roughly 300 plus point drop on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the VIX at that point, see it's diving down. It's still not oversold fully. And, um, that's on the daily chart. So if you look at the VIX on the other side, that means the VIX, by the time it gets fully overbought, we have another 300 point move down. Now that can happen as quickly as tomorrow, or it can slowly drag itself and happen, or it can happen, you know, that's what I'm saying. It happens within 48 to 72 hours. We, get, we can get a sharp reflex bounce based on the one hour chart, which you need to sell uh, or protect your positions, minimize your long exposure, 
or it might uh, or or it might drag itself and kind of like you know dilly dally and then uh, go into next week and fall. I don't know. All I know is that this is uh, starting to curve up and it's hitting some. This has been a major resistance at the 18 level. But if it breaks out over that, we are good to go to the 2022. That means the market that the market could fall another three to four hundred points. In between, as active traders, we minimize our exposure on the long side. We buy spy puts, which we did today, which were good for about 70 to 80 percent, uh, slightly more. As you know, I added the spy puts right when the level range level broke um, at a buck 16. They went to about two dollars and uh, 25 cents. <clears throat> Nice move, real quick, within one hour. As you know, I'm sure some of you did that. You can always buy a couple or buy one. I don't know what, what you guys want to do. Uh, and you can basically get a double, a close to a double, 50% plus uh, within a matter of 15, 20 minutes during these fast drawdowns or many flash crashes that happened on the first hour of trading. Um, uh, are you guys with me so far? Yes. Yes. Mike, Trina. Okay, good. Uh, just trying to cover a bunch of things real quick. So that's your VIX here. So the warning is that the VIX, if it completes this pattern here, the VIX can go to 22. All right. And that would be a significant resistance. That means the Dow would be down another, roughly another 300 plus points if this happens. So we can watch this level very closely. So far, it's acted as major resistance. You know, try. It tried to do that a few times and it got bumped down. So we'll see if that's the case this time. You could not, you know. Okay. Without harping on it too much, let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at, uh, I'm going to change the screen here at how I trade some of these individual stocks. Highly encourage everyone, again, for your benefit, do a free trial with Quad. Reach out to me. I'll send you the link. Call them up. They're based out here in Jersey City and in New York. Very nice people. They give you a free trial. Many of my members, well, some of my members have subscribed to Quad. They've seen the difference. Uh, and these guys are uh, um, excellent. It doesn't cost thousands of dollars. This is a. These are primarily used by Wall Street and hedge funds, this particular platform. And you can put trades through it. You can basically just put have look codes. It's got a whole thing. You know, you get a lot of information earnings, all that stuff, but primarily I use it for charts and my codes. So I think it, uh, they have a very discounted rate for members because I said many of my members might join you guys and stuff. Um, I pay quite a few hundred bucks a month because I have a pretty comprehensive system, but you get a nice version or skinny down version of this um, for like 100 to 120 bucks a month, which delivers triple the money uh, just on one trade by using the system by using this particular platform. Okay, I just changed it. So here's some stock stuff. Here's the sexy stuff, right? So let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at EA, for example. This is a daily chart of EA for people who are swing traders. And it's a pretty exciting chart. I mean, this is really exciting. Why is it exciting? Because it makes a lot, shitload of money. That's why it's exciting. So if you look at EA, I'm gonna draw this. I've shown this chart to you guys before. Here's your major downtrend line that doesn't get engaged till $109. I'm sorry, uh, doesn't get engaged till, this is your downtrend line. Remember, always keep an eye on the big picture and trade the shorter term picture just so that you can make some money, put it away, and then buying some longer dated calls with some more time, April calls and such, to know what's happening in the big, on, 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 on the, swing picture but in the meantime if something's up 300 percent intraday uh which i've showed you uh today uh and i've showed that this one was up 2000 percent after earnings if some someone cares to remember this was one of our biggest winners uh when it fell uh 278 and then shot up within three days went to 98 that 20 dollar move was almost 2000 percent on a lot of calls which went berserk okay and then it went higher as you can see uh so now it pulled back this is a very defined chart in my book. This is your uptrend channel. It has entered the uptrend channel today. That's a very nice candle. That candle was good for 300% on the money today alone. 
if you were placed two days ago, a little bit more for you guys. So bottom line is that um, this candle should expand and the maximum expansion would be this downtrend line, which I always put in red. And that downtrend line is at 105. Stock goes to 105. You guys should basically just do jumping jack, whatever flips and uh and, and and just say oh my god what a trade you gotta be in these trades now is it gonna do that in a straight lineup i don't know looks like it now here's what's exciting about it this was the volume today multi-day of sell volume there was one candle here which shot up which was also nice it went from on the 22nd of february it went from look at the price on the side uh it went from 93 and in two days it went to 101 that's eight dollars. I'll take eight dollars on any stock and three, four hundred percent on or more. What am I talking about? And and the electronic arts options are cheap. They're not like Amazon options where you get a second mortgage on the house to buy those calls. Not necessarily Amazon price line and I mean booking and stuff. It's so freaking expensive. Amazon's at least affordable. Um, it doesn't matter how big a trader you are. Uh, you you know it doesn't feel good to pay uh, for two options to pay. Uh, uh, you know, twenty six hundred bucks or three thousand dollars. You know, it's much nicer to buy them at two, three, four bucks and sell them at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think we can all agree on that. So forget the volume. Fast stochastics moving higher, still not fully overbought. This is the exciting part on the swing trade. The slow stochastics is just starting to turn. This is the beauty about technical analysis. I didn't even care to look at what the news was on electronic arts today. Okay, I was looking at this stock from two days ago when I started uh, posting it, alerting you all people to buy in there because this this slow, slow is just starting to turn. When it crosses over, that means when it crosses over the blue line here, the percentage D, the percentage K line crosses over like that. And then the blue line, the percentage D line also does that like it did here. You get phenomenal moves. It went from 75 to 91. That's when you get these phenomenal moves. It hasn't even happened yet. So we're early. And if it does happen, you want to stay long the trade till about that 109 phase. Now, markets are weird. Markets have euro issues and this issue and some tweet coming out of Trump about China or this or he's putting tariffs on on automakers in Europe, you know, European automakers, which would be pretty devastating for U.S. automakers, too, if you ask me. And I think they're trying to basically work around it. Um, the key is a perfect chart like this can get derailed a bit. But if the slow stows keep on crossing over and turning around, then you want to stay along the trade. Now, I've drawn the lines. This is the Fibonacci retracement. This is zero. This is the 23.6% level, which uh, I don't have the prices there. I'm going to put the prices in a minute. Sorry. There you go. Okay. So 92. We are above 23.6 Fib, 38.2. By now, you should know that when you get a large decline, and this one stock was $151 stock, right? Um, you tend to over a short, over a reasonable period of time, not months and months, a couple of weeks, um, you tend to gravitate to the 50 Fib, what we call the Fib, Fib 50. Okay, and I've shown that repeatedly. It has a high probability of working. So the Fib 50, 50 is $112.80. You can see that. One, one, let's call it 112 bucks. So somehow it manages to get up to 112. Trust me, that's only $12 from here because the stock's almost at 100. It can happen in one single day. You all know that. So be prepared. I like this a lot from a technical perspective. So that's 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 the swing picture. Now, if I want to uh, trade it uh, uh, fast and furious, I want to look at the one-hour picture. Look how beautifully you can read these charts. Any of you can. Any of you can. All right. Look at that. This was this this was seven seven uh, p.m. Forget seven p.m. This was this morning. Market started. Big reversal candle. The stock did slip to 94.46, but then you started to see this hammer develop. These things you see very, very beautifully, clearly using the quad platform. That's why I push the platform so much so that other people can have the benefit of uh, of uh, moving quicker and faster 
uh, and making some real decent money. You can just study the candles. The more you look at the candles, they talk to you. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to, you know, looking at, you know, level two and all that garbage. I don't do that. I'm not, you know, I don't have time to do that. And I'm not smart to like read level two and all that big blocks coming in and this and that. All right. I just look at my charts. It works. If it works for me, it'll work for you guys. Now, on the one hour basis, you can see it is overbought. So it could pull back a bit. But then I quickly switch to the daily and see whether or not this is dipping down or is it still continuing forward? If it's continuing forward with the crossover up, like it did here, like it did here, um, these run-ups, that means the run-up is going to continue. It's really as simple as that. But on a short-term basis, I also have a line here, uh, which which is at 102, which I think the stock gets to right there, because that's where the big sell program came in. When the stock went from, uh, on the 1st of March, went from 95, it went to 102, big candle, and then the big sell-off. Um, well, this would, this would be a short-term intermediate pattern completion, 102. You can see that. So you can just trade off these candles. If I see a large red candle coming in, I'm out. I'm out. I'm not going to fight that. Remember, what Clueless A Trading does for all of you people and for myself is we are the fastest messengers in the market and we are the fastest predictors of what might happen within a high degree of probability. That's what life, that's what trading is all about. If you think there's a good chance of winning, you get into the trade. That's the same thing about life. If you think it's a good opportunity, you do it. If you think it's going to get you in trouble, you don't do it. That's it. So this, these one-hour charts are extremely helpful, and uh, you can see that. When you see a surge like that, I know some big buying is coming in. What I like about this stock is that there seems to be big pump and dump programs. Uh, hedge funds are obviously trading this. Some big hedge funds were trading uh, uh, electronic arts, and we were certainly premeditated the move and that's why you got such a beautiful return on the money and hopefully you get more for another two bu another three bucks or so which would be another hundred percent or so on the on the calls or, or at least 60 to 70 percent on the calls let's take a look at tesla now this is tesla's daily chart all right this is a little bit more complex uh but you can clearly see here that i have markers in place i can see where the where the where the real lows are so it's not just about chasing prices. It's looking at the charts with it. That's why I keep on saying this pattern was looking fantastic. Look, remember, we traded this, um, made some real decent money, and then we got caught on the last part of the trade. But then I had cheaper lottos and when, when, when the stock basically fell hard on the, on the 1st of March, right there. Each of these lines which are there are auto-generated by quad. You can see them. The yellow line is always the pivot. It stopped right at the pivot. Isn't that amazing, right? Um, and I know if all hell breaks loose, the stock basically goes to 247. So it could be a good short to 247. I personally don't like, sometimes I've tried to short Tesla, very small amounts like the other day, and then it just turns around and runs the other way. So I don't like it. That's just my personal thing. I just, I haven't really made, other than maybe once or twice, or two or three times, made some real decent money on the short side. I, I tend to make real good money on the long side when I catch these candles moving. So at this point, this is your daily chart. It is getting quite oversold, both on the fast and the slow. Uh, so it's really not giving me too much of an indication other than saying that we, we might come down to 262 or we might move up and try to attack the back end of this uptrend, broken uptrend line 293, which I think is more likely. Stock is at 280 after hours because of the news that I had posted earlier on la uh, 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 this morning or last night from the Shanghai Morning Post that the Chinese construction, but China Construction Bank are uh, lending the money to build the Shanghai factory. That means the Shanghai factory is a done deal. And that's great because they'll be making the first Model 3s uh, for uh, foreign consumption and China's a big market in China. That's great, they don't have to pay the tariffs. It's gonna be made in China. And I'm not a huge Tesla lover and stuff, but I love the fact that everybody and their and their mothers and their grandparents and their pets are completely so negative on Tesla. CNBC is the ultimate culprit. You go to the CNBC website, you know, app, which I look at all the time. Every single story is a negative story on Tesla. They never mention the Shanghai factory news that came out in the uh, South China Morning Post. That's called real fake media. That's an oxymoron, but that is the ultimate fake media. Now, some people say CNBC is in the pocket of the hedge funds. Well, maybe they are. 
Okay? That's why it's constant barrage of negativity and the great positive news was never mentioned once. Never mentioned once. It's pretty incredible. So looking at this, this is the one hour chart. We have a falling wedge. I traded each of these candles very nicely. Not each of these candles, but the, but the overall picture. Uh, and you notice that the stock was up nicely. First part of the day, took some profits. Then, then the pullback happened and then added back down here. So, so uh, sorry, there was a text. Uh, and uh, so at this point, uh, I am trading really off the one hour charts here. So that's another way. You have the pivot, I know what the levels are. Show the prices, see, 284 to 25. So that's the reason why I'm so exact, just so you know. You know, there's no magical thing here, but I'm showing you the magic of my tactical chart is that I just put these things here. Now, this is where the big sellers came in. This is where the big sellers came in. This is where the big buyers came in. This is where the big buyers came in right there. So I can pinpoint it. We ran, we, you know, we killed this move. We got a good portion of this move. And that was as recently as uh, uh, the end of February. Okay. Well, out there, everybody's like, you know, blah, 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 blah. We are doing it. Now, if you use systems like Quad or even use Tinkerswim, um, but this one is far more effective, then you can trade highly volatile, high momentum, high risk reward type of uh, 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 trades without going nuts. It's pretty defined for me here, what's going on. So at this point, the stock is at 280. So it's basically up here right now. If there is a surge in the market, then most of it will go to is 285. If it breaks that, 288. If things really move, this is pattern completion with a possible double bottom. That's a W formation. Let me clean this out. Watch this. The news broke after hours. Briefing reported about the South China, you know, about the China Construction Bank and the factory and stuff, which I gave you to you guys either last night or early this morning when I saw it. Uh, so. Then the then 299 300, which also happens to be the upper end of the channel, um, would be the max move. So that's how I play it. All right. For some people just looking at the prices, like, oh my God, it's running higher. Oh my God, it's running lower. I simply go into the guts of the prices. Look at the internals. Look at the uh, candles. Look at the uh, patterns. And Try to share as much as possible with all of you, and that's how you do it. Let me show you another one, for example, uh, Netflix. So Netflix is a beautiful trading chart, uh, uh, stock, as you know. Netflix was a huge winner. Market was down big yesterday. Netflix was running like a beast, and it ran like a beast straight to the level that I said it was going to go to. This was drawn and shown to you guys. 363. Where did the stock go to? 362.95. Uh, I mean, you can't get any better than this, you know? And right there, 9 a.m., the stock's over. I managed to sell, get out, take the profit. I didn't short it. That's another one. I don't like shorting much because I just my experience, you know, it, it just two powerful stocks, okay? Ten, you tend to do it. But if you want to do it, sure, you can, you can, you can certainly do it. And uh, I left it alone. And then now, so I've drawn this line before based on the previous uh, sell zones, what we call supply points. Supply being where the supply comes in or the sell, uh, sell programs come in. And look, exactly it hit there. Netflix, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Apple, uh, Apple to a certain degree, these stocks follow. I mean, I, I, I don't know what I would do. Um, if I didn't have these quad bar charts in front of me, honestly. Double bottom, possible bottom. I know that at 348, I'll be a buyer again. Slow stochastics, nice, deeply oversold. I don't wait around for, I, 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 uh, I'm trained enough to look and see if it's starting to curve up. I tend to get in a little bit early. Once it starts to curve up, the stock's going to move fast. Three, four, five bucks. Netflix calls are cheap. Three, four, five bucks. You get a double on your uh, on your calls. Play with smaller amounts of money. You can do it. 
So you can clearly see what's going on here. Let's look at, um, let's look at, uh, blah, blah, blah. Can you look at Google? So here's Google chart. It's a fantastic looking chart. Now intraday, you're gonna get these bars because anytime Google twitches, it's down to or up to. So this is your one hour chart on Google. It's a very defined chart. Right now, what we have is a range, which was, you know, Google, we just killed it. I told you the stock would go to 1165. The, 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 the stock went to 11, close to 1180. All right. We were buying Google just two days ago. If you all remember, at four bucks, Google calls went to 15, 16, 20, 22. I think you traded that a bit, right, Trina? Yeah, that was a big winner. Good. So if you use charts like this, then you would be able to manage it. You don't even have to, you know, you just have to match it, you know, with what I'm showing as in the structure, and you'd be a bigger winner. So bottom line is, look, it's all systematic because Google's really traded by the big boys, right? It's very difficult for an individual investor to move a eleven to twelve hundred dollar stock. I mean, if we buy one, that's eleven hundred dollars. So obviously, that you know, you, you the institutional hedge funds are the ones which basically move and trade this stock like a monster. So, uh, th so this pattern uh, is uh, to me quite constructive. But again, that volatility monster is always there, and that's the reason why things get skewed. This was a very nice candle at the end of the day, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's another red candle tomorrow morning. But at least I know that this. This this breakout, this was a range two, right? Right there. That uh, at eleven thirty four, which is twenty dollars lower, while everyone's freaking out, we would be significant buyers as long as this is cooperating and starting to turn. So I I would be a very aggressive buyer, even though I still have it a little bit um, at um, of Google at eleven thirty eight, eleven forty, knowing that that was the previous breakout zone. That was the previous. Impulse moves higher uh, uh, where, 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 the, where the trigger started for the move. So that would be where you would be a, a significant buyer. Now, things could be, you know, it doesn't always have to come down here. It could very well, it could very well turn from here and then start to move. Now, the pivot, yesterday's pivot is going to be adjusted automatically by the system tomorrow. So this pivot is not going to be at 1167. All right. So it'll be adjusted and I'm going to adjust it and basically put it out there. So whatever the case may be, I drew a megaphone. Lower end of the megaphone is around 1134, 1138. That's about 20 bucks lower. And that can happen real quick. But with a flick of an eye, you know that. Blink of an eye. And then the stock turns and runs. These stocks, just to remind everybody, can generate significant amounts of money. And you don't even have to buy 10, 20 calls. You can just buy one. If you buy one at four, it goes to 22. You tell me how much money you make. Because if you buy more than two or three of the higher price calls and, and the market gets, gets into this, you know, quick, fast algorithmic sell-offs, you're going to be upside down. But don't no worries as long as you're focusing on the chart. So start off, like I always say, I'm not here to tell you exactly what you can do with your money, but start off with one. And then you say, okay, I'm going to own two calls, then wait for this technical setup, see if it pulls back or not. If it's starting to run, you add the other one. If it falls, you add the other one to lower your cost basis, and then you get these moves. Look what happened here. Okay, so this is positive. This is positive. But like I said, market's extremely volatile now for the next 24 to 48 to 72 hours, and um, it'll, you know, these candles are going to move quite rapidly. But so far, from a technical perspective, the stock is good to go. It was a very large cup. It was a handle. Bang. Cup and handle. Breakout. Cup and handle. Breakout. Now we did this. We are start If things hold at that 1138, 1134 level, even though the stock's at 1154, I'm just showing you the major supports, it becomes a W formation. Back to 1170. And on a, on a risk on day, that means when when the when the overall macro funds are into you know buying stocks instead of selling stocks, and those you know and those days happen like almost every 24 hours or only 48 hours depending on where the sell off is, then you catch that wave and you're out. 
You understood what I just said, right? You see, you see the pattern I'm talking about. Yep. There you Thank go. You. Yep. You know, this is very important to me. Um, I I never say I live and bre- uh, uh, die by this the stochastics, but I give a lot of importance and weighting to this stuff because it is, uh, you know, it's serious. Because once it's starting to turn, you got to be in. Then the candles cooperate. Couple of green candles. You want to be in, you want to be somewhere in the in the first or second green candle move on the one hour chart in order to make the real money. Let's take a look at Roku. Showing you some movers here. I mean, Roku chart is just sick. Now, I am not in Roku right now, and I am feeling really crappy because I, I mean, I, I basically left Roku at this level, and then the stock shot up another four or five bucks. But at least we were there, um, and we played Roku very nicely, as you know. Roku reminds me of Electronic Arts. All right. So here, this is a daily chart. So this is a swing picture. Look how unbelievable this picture. This was the big move down if you don't take into account that there were lots of moves up in between that and now it was creating this bull flag bang that is one heck of a move that happened on earnings i believe when we played it too on the 22nd of february once it does that it's clear as daylight to see one way or the other roku wants to go to 78 technically speaking so you still got eight bucks left on, in this baby. Now, in order to do that, you can be nitpicking everything that happens every 15 minutes or an hour. You want to buy some time, maybe the April 18th or the first week in April or the end of March. Remember, there's a lot of window dressing or portfolio markup by in, in, institutional money managers and mutual funds that they want to show the biggest moving high-performing high stocks in their books for the end of the quarter. End of the quarter of March is March 30th. That's the end of the first quarter. Very important what I'm telling you all. End of the first quarter. And every quarter they want to show, oh, I own the winner. It's it's borderline legal, but that's what they do. It's called portfolio markups or window dressing. Look it up. And window dressing starts off generally in the last 10 days of the month. So Roku is definitely going to be a candidate. So if it pulls back a little bit, great. But Technically speaking, the stock might go straight to 78 on the next up day in the market. And um, and that's where you want to be, you know, uh, 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 the big seller. So this is a beautiful chart and most charts don't look like this. But this stock is definitely being accumulated hard by a lot of funds, a lot of hedge funds and mutual funds who never believed in Roku. And Roku was shorted. So the shorts are dying and the stock is looking like this. Okay, so um, Amazon. So Amazon's getting to a level here where it's getting very attractive, very attractive. This is your major support level in Amazon, down to 1,600. Do I think the stock can go to 1,600? Sure it can. You have another 300 point down day, Amazon will be down 20. And you want to be a hands-down technical buyer on Amazon at 1,600 because that's a major, major support level. And I believe going back to the 12th of February, a major gap fill. See, gap. So Amazon's trading, if you want to look to its trading range, was basically, and I, I actually played, we played this very nicely, 1655 and 1606, 55 points. It broke out of that 1655 level, went to 1707. The 1720 calls was one of our biggest winners, I believe, last week. So now Amazon is being sold because that's you know it's like an ATM machine you know they have to sell the big stocks to come up with the cash to pay the the big margin uh, so, uh, uh, calls they're getting institutions do that so they own some Amazon in the portfolio each stock that they each stock that they sell is 1650 bucks so you know so they, for every thousand shares um, they're selling hundred sixty five thousand dollars. 1650. I want to be right about the decimals. Yeah, for every thousand shares, it's a hundred one point six, not hundred sixty-five thousand. I knew I was wrong. It's one point six million dollars for every thousand shares that a fund sells. They come up with that money to satisfy their, you know, one thousand shares of Amazon is one point six five million dollars. 
That's why Bezos is what he is, right? Jeff Bezos is the world's richest man. So hedge funds tend to basically sell those in order to come up with the cash to pay off the margin and stuff. It's general normal procedure. It is, uh, it is getting to a level where it's very attractive. You can notice that. And in this chart, as, I, as I'm looking at my screen here, um, I can clearly play this. You can play Amazon so beautifully during the day for 10, 15, 20 points in any reversal. Or even for on one hour, it just jumps 8, 9, 10 points. And when you use these type of platforms, you're totally connected. So that's it. So on that note, I will wrap up. I think this is very effective. This is the quad system. I want to show you one other screen. If I can get there. Oh, I can get there. You want to mount the screen? This is Warden 2000, TC2000. It's been around for a long time. I find this to be extremely useful too. It looks very much like quad. Um, there's a lot of features in it. And uh, they even tell you like what stocks are going bonkers, you know. Uh, uh, they they and this, I still have to find uh, use this. This is like the crazy ones. This is like the crazy one. The BPTH, which I recommended around 30 and change, went to 40, ended at 36. I have a few shares at 31. Went to 41, 10 bucks. Took a little bit down, left the rest in there, closed at 36. So it tells you the percentage moving stocks. Most of them, I have no idea what they are. Some of them, I do know the name. Look at the percentage moves during the day. And most of them are like uh, uh, small penny stocks and, and dollar or two. So this one, see how clear it is? This was a beautiful winner. That's a hollow candle. Hollow candles are unbelievable money makers. This hollow candle on eight, uh, Horizon, because they did a secondary offering, that's the reason why the stock was down. Um, Horizon Pharma, this is a swing trade, was at uh, was at 9.45. So you could have bought the stock at 24. You could have bought the calls uh, for literally next to nothing. And you had a good solid, almost a double on the money as it moved up two bucks. And now it looks like it wants to fill the gap at 27. This is Alt, another one that we are trading. It's a spec stock. Bought some common and bought some of the cheap calls and i'm going to let it go so these this this particular screen is very very important to me because i can switch in the 15 minute i can look at a five minute if i really want to see what's happening underneath you know how fast things are moving look at that so if you if you're looking to trade you can buy it okay let's say you want to buy whatever um at the four dollar stock goes to five that's 25 percent on your money That's actually after hours. After hours, it's moving up this nicely. And this is what it did. So you can, without these type of platforms, you won't be able to catch them. This one was, this was at uh, 10.30 a.m. 7. What day is today? Today. 3.61. I didn't catch that. It went to 6. So you could catch a good portion of this. Let's say buy 100 shares. You're up like 3 bucks. You're up like 300 bucks. They take it. This is Tesla. On a 15 minute so i also use this platform quite extensively just look at that this was a big breakdown i have the levels put in i show this once in a while too all right ladies and gentlemen any quick questions trina i'm going to wrap up okay she's gone mike have a great evening i hope this is very helpful to all of you wanted to show you the quad platform anyone interested in subscribing to it Contact me. I'll send you the link. You can directly get the free trial from them. I wish you guys all well. This is a serious stock market, a real market of stocks. We're catching some really big flyers. The market is heavy because of all the stuff that's going on. The U.S.-China deal is critical. President Trump should deliver from what it looks like. But if he doesn't deliver, watch out below. Okay? On that note, God bless you all. See you guys tomorrow.